Hello, welcome to Lancaster Hi-Fi. In a recent video, I talked about some problems I was having, or my son was having, with this Pioneer SX-828. And how I was perplexed that the problem was readily apparent in his apartment. I treated the volume knob, which I thought was the problem, with deoxit. He tried it the next day, and it hadn't fixed the problem. I brought it over here, or he brought it over here, and I, tr I tried it, and it worked just fine. Initially, I concluded that it must have simply taken the deoxid some time to deoxidize whatever problem was in that volume knob, the, the pot. But I got a couple of comments saying this is a classic relay failure. That is, you might have intermittent contacts in the relay and cleaning those contacts ought to clear up the problem. And, you know, one comment like that, I can go, well, you know, maybe that's something to look at, you know, if the problem rears its head again. And then a second comment going, you know, this is classic, or maybe even a third, I can't remember now. Um, so, you know, uh, not wanting to be thick-headed, uh, you know, when people offer me advice, I, one of the great things about this YouTube channel is I have learned things from commenters in exactly this sort of way. So, and the relay is not something that I worked on when I did the massive restoration of this unit. I think it's probably a good idea of, you know, even if the relay isn't the problem, going ahead and getting at that relay and cleaning those contacts to make sure that everything is ship shape. I'm not sure how simple that's going to be. I, I think um, uh, one thread on Audio Karma I glimpsed said that you had to remove the main amp board in order to get at the relay. I haven't, uh, haven't attempted to get at the relay in particular, so we'll see how this goes. There are a number of threads about replacing the relay even some of them include uh, sort of repurposing, reusing the original cover from the old relay on the new one. I'm hoping that that cover is not so hard to get off and that I can get the relay off and or at least uh, get access to those contacts, clean those, you know, contact cleaner, Probably not deoxid on those, probably contact cleaner and maybe even some uh, two or three thousand grit sandpaper is probably the move. So that's the plan and we'll see how it goes, but figured it'd be worth documenting. Alright, there's the relay right there. Looks like I, it's just it looks like that cover is just held on with a couple of screws that I can get off and then the contacts are all on this side and I may just be able to get at those pretty easily. Well, I thought perhaps since I hadn't found any explanations of how to do this on Audio Karma that maybe it was simply a matter of removing the screws that are holding it to the chassis here and just lifting that clear cover off but that's, that's not the case. That is, I removed those screws and now the whole thing is, is free. All right, well, I hate taking the faceplate off of this thing, but I don't want to risk marring it, so I'm going to have to take off all the knobs and the faceplate and then probably take the bottom off, put this up and see what's what from the other side just what I need to do to be able to get at this. I don't know, maybe I'll just give it another quick look at the top here, but I don't want to pull on this too much. It's clearly not fastened down except with wires on the other side. Okay, I've identified the little points where I probably need to get to in order to release this plastic cover. And it may be that if I remove the cover over the tuner and the cover over the main amp that I can get at it from both sides in order to take that cover off. I think it's worth a shot anyway. Those aren't, those covers aren't hard to take off. Success, at least, in getting the cover off.
to show a close-up of what this assembly what the relay looks like here and so I don't because I don't know how well it might have probably didn't come out very well from the overhead view but what I'm trying to do is clean the contacts and you can see it's a dual throw so right now it's in its normally closed position with the contacts here on the outside but then there's another set of contacts on the other side and so when it flexes, it switches over to the other side. And it's that set of contacts over there that looked like there might have been some corrosion or something, oxidation. You can see the spring on the top, you know, gets it to its normally normal position. And then you have to apply power to resist that spring and make the contacts go over to the other side. Anyway, so what I was doing was dragging a piece of very fine sandpaper through in all the various orientations back and forth between the contacts, applying pressure where I needed to get on the other side, the other set of contacts on the other side, and then getting in there with the deoxid and just the, the piece of paper soaked with a bit of deoxid and then flushing that out. And so now I'm just waiting for the deoxid to evaporate slash dry. And then I can put the cover back on and screw it back into place and it should be all good. Fingers crossed. But the, you know, the relay in general looks good.
Time will wash every time 